Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for coming back, watching me for the first time or whatever it is. I appreciate it. Hope you're having an awesome day. And this is going to be kind of a Luminar quick tip. I'm going to try to make it quick. There's a lot to talk about, but it's all about one subject. So I don't know how quick it'll be just because there's a lot to talk about. But anyway, let me get going. Um, the topic is um, how many times do you shoot a photo and it's underexposed? And so, you know, sometimes I'll look at the back of my camera or even through the viewfinder and I'm going through the uh, photos after I've taken them. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of dark, um, you know, so it's underexposed. And with digital photography, I'm not always concerned about, oh my God, I got to get the perfect exposure because obviously we can get in software and adjust things. Now, having said that, there are going to be people that are probably going to cry foul and say, no, you got to get it right in camera. And I agree, it's, it's better if you get things right in camera, but we don't always do that, especially if you're out, like I do a lot of cityscapes and traveling, and you're just kind of running and gunning. It's not like you're sitting... Uh, you know, waiting on a sunset at a landscape and you're taking, you know, five photos uh, an hour, like I'm taking, you know, maybe 500 an hour sometimes. And so I'm sometimes, you know, running and gunning. Some would call it, uh, you know, spraying and praying. Um, but the point is you don't always get the exposure right. So regardless of how you get there, we've all been there and we'll be there again. And it's not hard to fix. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can fix it. So I found like seven or eight different filters in Luminar that you can use to sort of correct those exposures. And so let me jump into that and let's get started. So here's a photo. Uh, this was shot in Rome. Now this is a particularly uh, interesting example, I guess, because I've got a bright sky where the sun is, right? I caught the sun coming down over that building and that's the Vatican in front of me. Um, and this was actually from a bracket set. So it's underexposed, but that's okay because I was firing brackets. However, I wanted to use this as an example because it's not just underexposed, but it's also going to be potentially overexposed in the sky if I'm not careful. And so I think it's a good example. So let me close some of these things that I don't care about. Let me start with a couple of the first um, filters that you might think of, and that would be uh, exposure, right? So you might say, let me get the exposure filter and then you just drag it this way. Um, and does it work? It, it does. However, it doesn't give you enough control. It's a single slider. I honestly never use it, um, and that's because it doesn't give you enough control. As you go like this to brighten the foreground, you're like, okay, now the foreground looks better, but look at the sky. It's just a blown out mess. So I don't use exposure because there's not enough control in it, so I'm going to delete that. Um, brightness and contrast, you might say, hey, let me, let me use that because that's what I need to work on. Sure. So just drag brightness, and there it is going to 100. And again, you know, it's brightening um, the, the stuff that's dark, but again, just like the exposure slider, it's indiscriminate, meaning um, it's not smart, and so it's just gonna brighten everything. And again, so I ended up with a sky that's kind of blown out. So I don't like that filter for it either. Um, another one might be, let's say, the Curves tool. Uh, and this one works really well. I mean, it's a powerful, uh, powerful filter, um, but you gotta know how to use it, right? And, and I'm okay with it. I, I don't use it a ton. I mean, I get it generally, but um, if you're new to this or haven't used Curves in the past, it, it could be intimidating, but you know, you can do things like this where you can start lifting some of the shadows, um, but you know, still kind of control some of the highlights uh, and you know, get an image that, that maybe looks a, a little bit better. That doesn't look great. I'm just kind of hacking here and I kind of got some of the colors jacked up. Um, so Curves works pretty well if you know what you're doing. Um, I don't really use it for that either. I don't like it. So um, let me rephrase that. I like the Curves tool. I don't like it for brightening and exposure. There's better tools, and I'm getting to those in a minute. Um, dodge and Burn, you might say, you know, or Adjustable Gradient. And again, Adjustable Gradient's good, especially the, the fact that you can split the frame uh, like this. You might say, well, that's all the dark stuff below that line. So let me set that there, and then I come over here to bottom, and I just lift exposure. Okay, that's helping, but the top, you know, I need to go fix a little bit of that. But I can't go too much because, you know, on brightening the exposure on the top because I'm going to blow out the highlights. And this is where Dodge and Burn is a good complement to that. So you can just say, hey, Dodge and Burn, I'm going to say start painting. I'm at lighten 50%. Sure, let me do that. Let me lighten the dome a little bit. Let me lighten some of this stuff. You know, maybe this is going to help. And it does help. Um, so, you know, I think that looks better. Maybe you come over here. And again, I'm kind of winging it. Um, but... You know, maybe you do that and you say, okay, so adjustable gradient and dodge and burn put together took me from that to that. And if you look at just dodge and burn, you can see where it was darker and now brighter. Now, I did kind of a sloppy job, so that's kind of immaterial because, again, this is not the method I would use. Um, adjustable gradient, 
you know, does, uh, does a good job. It's an incredibly powerful tool. And in fact, I use it in a lot of my videos and on a lot of my photos because it's super powerful. But I'm just coming at this video from the point of what would Jim use to brighten a, you know, an underexposed photo and do it intelligently and, and, and capably, right? Um, I would not use adjustable gradient or dodge and burn. Um, great filters, I use them a lot. Um, I just wouldn't use them for that. So what would I use? My three favorites are Develop, Accent AI, and Tone. So let me show you those. Um, you do have the exposure slider here in Develop. Um, the thing I like about this is, um, and the reason I would use Develop and not the exposure slider by itself is because you also here have shadows and highlights and whites and blacks. So it's all put together. Now you can go get those other filters. There's a shadows, highlights, and a whites and blacks. Uh, but you don't need it all if you have develop, also known as raw develop. So just come over here, brighten your exposure a little bit, but then you can take the highlights back down so you can see them recovering some stuff in the sky, right? Because it was like that. If you look around the sun, really blown out. But now with the highlight slider coming down, you're starting to see some of the detail in the clouds, and I think that looks a lot better. Shadows, I can say, yeah, I want to lift those shadows a little bit. And now I've got a pretty well exposed image, right? There's the before. And there's the after, and that's just a couple of sliders all in the develop filter. So that's method number one that I like a lot. I think it's super powerful, super capable. It's an incredible filter. Um, the second one I might would consider is Accent AI, right? Just because um, it does a pretty good job. Here's the thing. As you can tell, it's not doing a great job on this photo. And with Accent AI, I think it does depend on the photo because Accent AI, it does a lot of things. I did a video once where I compared it to other filters in Luminar, and it was like, and I forgot the number, but it was like six or seven, maybe even more filters that it kind of mirrored, right? So Accent AI is an overall, like, how can I, you know, accentuate your photo using artificial intelligence to make it better? So as you can tell, it's impacting some of the colors here. It's, it's warming up the photo. So look at the before and the after. It's warming up the photo. I'm getting some noise uh, in some of these shadow areas because it, it's pushing it pretty hard. And I'm getting this kind of interesting, and by interesting I mean not interesting, uh, kind of yellow cast to part of the clouds here where some of the sunlight's hitting it. So um, I like Accent AI, but I would like it maybe in tandem with Tone. And Tone is the last one I want to talk about, specifically Smart Tone. And that's because, as the name implies, it is smart. And I mean, if you look at that, I mean, that's just about as good as you're going to get. That might that slider by itself might be as good as everything I did in the develop filter. Uh, and you have a lot of similar things. You have highlights and shadows and whites and blacks and contrast and exposure, all that stuff. The difference with develop is um, you also have the temperature tint and you have the clarity, which I would probably use on this photo. Um, so, you know, what you might do is maybe not do as much smart tone and maybe come in here and give it a little accent AI and it's not making as much of an impact. But I think for this photo, I think I'd get rid of Accent AI and I would probably use Tone, something like that. Smart Tone is just amazing. Or you know, you, you could come in here like this and say, let me lift the exposure a little bit. Let me take down the highlights. Let me lift the shadows a little bit. And now let me give it a little Smart Tone and see how I get. And you know what, it looks pretty good. This sky, I think, looks pretty good. And if we're comparing the before and after, you can see that we've you know come a long way just with some of the sliders in the tone filter. So for me, it's either pretty much tone or develop. Those are my two favorites. I do like Accent AI, but again, I would use that selectively. This kind of image where it's really warm, it's, it's picking up a lot of that warmth and adding it where I don't really want to bring it up. It's accentuating some of the golden tones that you saw here in the edges of the clouds. And um, you know that's something Accent AI does. It seems to accentuate some color. I don't want to accentuate color in this kind of photo. That's why I said it's probably one of my top three for this photo. It doesn't make it. It would be either develop or tone. But overall, it's good at brightening exposure. So if, if you've got a different distribution of light or if you've got a different sort of color and that sort of thing, Accent AI might be a great one for you. Um, so those are kind of the filters that I would consider and use to brighten a dark exposure in Luminar. It happens all the time. I mean, I, I endlessly shoot photos that I don't expo uh, expose properly. It doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm in a hurry or maybe I just take it and I'm like, well, it's close enough. I can fix it in post. doesn't mean I don't know how to operate my camera. And by, by saying this about me, I'm saying this, don't feel that way yourself. Don't feel like, well, crap, I'm not any good because I didn't get it right. 
You don't have to always get it perfect. You don't have to get it just right. In fact, there's no such thing as perfect. Um, underexposed to me might be perfectly contrasty to you. So, you know, you might say, Jim, that's too bright. I don't like it. And you might want it darker because maybe you like it a little bit more like that. Cool. That's fine. Um, that's why there's no such thing as a perfect exposure, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, it comes down to taste, right? So that's a uh, quick tip, I guess, on um, brightening an underexposed photo in Luminar. Um, you know, we all have these dark photos that we've taken and need to brighten them. And that's a couple of ways you can do it, primarily with Develop and Tone, sometimes Accent AI. The other stuff I would probably skip. Um, the only caveat I have there is like adjustable gradient is super powerful. I use that on a lot of photos, but generally just like, oh, the foreground's kind of dark or need some contrast or a little bump and vibrance or saturation or whatever, you can do that kind of stuff in adjustable gradient. So I'm not trying to say don't ever use those other filters. I'm saying if you're trying to establish a base image that needs to be brightened because it's underexposed, then I would start with these two filters primarily and maybe Accent AI to get them sort of to a starting point and then maybe add a new layer and start doing your um, other edits, which could be further adjustments to the light. It could be color. It could be detail, whatever it is you want to do to the photo. So just some thoughts on how I approach this sort of thing. You know, that's the beauty of Luminar is you have all these filters and different ways you can do things, which I've had some people say to me, you know, hey, it's really cool that there's 50 filters in Luminar, but 50 is a lot, Jim. I, I don't want to learn 50. I don't have time. I don't care. I just want the five or 10 that I can get by on. And I think if you're going to be brightening an underexposed photo, if you start with develop and tone, you're off and running, and that'll give you the opportunity to get the light right, and then you can go do whatever other edits you want to make to the photo. That's how I'd approach it. I, uh, I guess that's all i got to say about this one. So thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. Hit subscribe, like. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this sort of video and this topic in particular. Or if you have other topics like this you'd like me to address, by all means, leave a comment. And if I can get to it, I will. Thanks for watching. See you soon, my friends. Take care. Have a great day. Adios.